Hi there, welcome to Power to the Flower. I'm Kara and you're here in my Zone 9 backyard. And in today's video, I want to do two things. Number one, just give you a little February garden tour and talk about evergreen plants that work a treat in zone nine and above, maybe even in zone eight and seven. And then secondly, I thought that it would be fun to just follow up on these wash bin planters. I filmed this vi this video two weeks ago and put these Hucro rosatas in and this Vinca minor, which is just starting to bloom. We planted a bunch of begonia tubers, they're called. And we took all the old stuff out from 2021 and I, I'll just show you what I do with my old plants and kind of how I take care of them because plants are living things and they can be totally moved and reused. So if that's something that you want to know more about, then just hang on to the end of the video. So let's start here with our wash bin containers that we planted up two weeks ago. This is hookera, also called coral bells. There's two of them in here. These like shade to part sun condition. So as you can see right now, it's 11 in the morning and they are getting full sun and they probably get full sun for about three or four hours a day. This is an ideal condition for a hookera. It can also survive in the shade, but it gets its biggest and fullest when it's getting some sun during the day, uh, at least two hours. But then it doesn't like heat. What I like to do is put hookera in situations like this where it's gonna get full sun in the winter but by the time the summer comes, this area becomes fully shade. So it just lives its best life in those conditions. And I would say the same for succulents. Succulents are actually growing. They're doing their growing phase during the winter months here. So fall and winter. This is the time when they need to be watered on a regular basis and they're gonna change their colors and they're going to be growing. When, and they want sun to be able to grow. When it goes into the summertime and it's really hot, most succulents are dormant. And so what that means is they're not actually actively growing. So that is the time to decrease water, maybe like once a week in our area, but increase shade, so shade, so again, shade. So again, this is perfect because by the time it gets really hot, these succulents are only getting filtered sun, mostly shade, and they love their year round life. So succulents, evergreen. Hookera, evergreen. This is called Vinca Minor. It gets purple blooms in the spring. This is its first one. And then it eventually grows and trails. I mean, this thing will grow all the way to the ground evergreen in our zone nine area. All right, let's go over here. Here's another window box full of succulents. Again, this is the time that I'm watering them maybe twice a week. They're loving their sunny, sunny life. My favorite succulent to use, which I find the strongest, the hardiest, the one that always lives and never dies, are aeoniums. And there are a bunch of aeoniums in this window box. I'll point them out to you. This is an aeonium sunburst. This is an aeonium undulata. This is an aeonium kiwi. This is an aeonium, I think it's called jelly bean. This is an aeonium, I think it's called black cop or swarta black. This is another type of aeonium. I don't know what this one is, but it's just not as dark as that one. It's got a more rose color. These are also like kind of mini aeoniums. And the great thing about aeoniums is they're very easy to propagate. So let's say like for this, for these two, they're really coming out of the window box. And let's say that I decided I don't really like that. I can cut the stem anywhere I want, here, 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 and then stick it back in the ground and it will begin to grow. And that's actually what I did with these three. They became very large, about this big, and then I ended up cutting them off and then putting them back into the soil, and now they're starting again. Very easy to take care of. Over here is my favorite little spot. So we have two leather leaf ferns. These are hellebores. This is what a hellebore flower looks like. And unfortunately, all the leaves have gotten attacked by slugs, so I cut all the leaves off of this one. This one hasn't started blooming yet, but you can see the leaves. Leaves look like this. There's like five or six leaves on each branch, and then they send up blooms from the bottom every year. You can see here some new branches and blooms that it will be coming. And I've underplanted these with perennial clover. And then down here we have it underplanted with 
another vinca just like that one with the purple blooms this one also gets purple blooms and it but it is variegated so you variegated mean it, ha it has like two colors on the leaves like yellow and green another great flower that sometimes maybe is underused or under considered but is evergreen in our area are geraniums and that's what this pink flower is right here geraniums offer beautiful evergreen leaves and then some of them even bloom in the winter here are some more over here in the ground um, I don't know which varieties these are because honestly it doesn't really matter but there are two different ones this one has a darker leaf with a green center and this one has just like a green leaf with a little bit of a dark uh, edging they do not bloom in the summer they'll bloom in the spring and you can imagine that if I had planted them or like potentially around the tree, that would be so pretty in the winter. So geraniums are also really easy to propagate. So you can just cut off a stem like this and then put this in the ground and it will potentially root in and grow a new geranium. So they are easy plants. They don't have very extensive root systems. They're easy to move about. They're easy to propagate. They're beautiful and they're really cheap. So that's cool too. All right, let's move into the next part of the video, how I move my plants around. So sometimes I wanna use pots in a different way. So in this pot, wash bins, I had Super Tuna Fuchsia, the pink one, a Salmon Zonal Geranium, the salmon colored one, a red Petunia, and the white Super Tuna Latte, as well as the lime green potato vine. This season, I wanted to use these pots in a shady location, so all of these plants needed to move to a new sunnier location. The main thing I want you to take from this part of the video is that you can move your plants around. You just need to put them in soil and keep them growing until you make a final decision. All right, so we're going to head up here into this corner space, and I think I'm going to put the geraniums up there as spot holders and I'm gonna put the two of the super tunias in there. This area is where I ended up putting my two super tunia lattes actually in the ground. Here's one right here. I had a pointer. Here's one right here and you can see it's still alive with this little bit of green growth and then the other one's right here not looking as good but I'm gonna leave it in the ground with I'm hoping with some sun and some watering it's gonna come back to life so if you want to reuse your plants it's only February and these are perennials and so give them a chance they would at least give them through some good warm weeks of weather and uh, not so cold night temperatures above 40 degrees before you throw in the towel with your um, Super tunia. So this is my Tibicina ervilliana, which is not doing very good in the spot I thought it was going to do great in. So I'm going to transfer it here. This can grow eight feet tall and wide, like a huge bush, but it could also be kept smaller with pruning. So I've added soil and some fertilizer, and now I'm going to add the super tunias. I think I'm gonna underplant these for today, at least with the hot pink. Like I said, we can always move it around. So I'm gonna put one right here and one right here. I want it to be at the same level as the Tibicina. All right. So they're at about the same level. And I'm not gonna worry about how they look right now because it's not the season. But we're gonna have another look in February and see that they're looking better. That these Super Tunia Fuchsias were gigantic. They alone could probably fill this pot, but so we might end up actually just wanting one in here or maybe not the Tibicina, but let's just see. Let's just see how we go. And here's our geraniums. Let's transplant those salmon geraniums. Geraniums do not have a very big root system, remember? So I'm just gonna set them right on top of this soil, give it a little fertilizer, tuck them right into bed, and we'll be good to go. If you can check if it's alive by cutting off some of this. Oh, it's still woody. Cut deeper. And it's green inside. Also, there's a leaf growing. We can carry on knowing it's still alive and get super excited about our spring show. 
All right, so I hope that was helpful in terms of thinking about evergreen plants for our zone nine climates, as well as thinking about reusing your plants from last year. Just because they're in a pot doesn't mean it has to stay in that pot for the rest of its life. You can move, you can change, you can have new ideas, but you can still use those plants. They are very malleable. So I hope this was helpful and you can catch me every Tuesday on YouTube for new videos in my zone nine garden. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook during the week. All right. Thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.